Tennessee now trailing by five against Indiana with 4.17 left to go in this charity exhibition matchup in Knoxville. Malik Renew just scored a foul call on Tennessee's Felix Ankara and Bolton as well as they had a video review and the call was confirmed. Yeah, I think it's definitely the right call. You know, you like the effort by Felix Ankara to wipe that away. But, you know, again, it's bad defense that Tennessee's playing right now. Offensively, Indiana is just really taking it to them, getting them all out of sorts, and getting the shots that they want. Conversely, on the other end, Tennessee's just on ice cold. You know, if you look right now, they haven't scored uh, in, in just about, what is that, five minutes? Joseph talked about the Hawkeye video review that is new to this year, no longer the DB Sport technology, but taking a look at that last play as we get set for the and one for Malik Renew. Definitely the right call. Ball was on its uh, trajectory down. Renew especially taking over in this game for Indiana as he has 18 points. Top scorer for the Indiana Hoosiers. points in the second half for Renew. All Big Ten honorable mention a year ago, averaging 15 points per game, six rebounds per contest. And a key three-pointer as well that has helped Indiana in the second half. The end one is good. 10-0 Indiana run. Who's going to be the guy that wants to knock down the shot here for Tennessee? When you're struggling, you need someone to shoot it confidently and in rhythm. Who's going to be that guy? Tennessee missing its last six shots from the floor. Mayshack. Whoa! Tennessee really needed that again. Mayshack has worked that all summer long. You know, shooting upwards of 8,000 8, threes in order to put himself in a position to be counted on to knock down a victory like that. Follow away from the basket, had tight defense by Akpara. Miles Rice couldn't get the answer. Basketball to Tennessee. Good box out there by Felix Akpara and Umar Balo. Man, I really love that battle with these guys today. <laughs> The physicality that both of these young men bring is phenomenal. Second made three by Mayshack in this game. Igor Milicic Jr. inbounds for Tennessee. Tennessee missing the front end, but the offensive rebound, Jemai Mayshack. Another opportunity for the balls. Shot clock winding down. Zakai Ziegler just short of the three. Milicic fighting for the board and a foul. That's what you're looking for. 
for from Igor Milicic. He's not just the guy to stand around the perimeter to shoot the three-pointers. That's what he's known for. But he can get in the mix there and, 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 and make some tough rebounds there. Bring it down, get your chance to get yourself a chance to get to the free-throw line and knock these down. Milicic at the line for the balls. Makes the first outstanding shooter in his career at Charlotte, where he averaged 12 points per game. One point game. Tennessee has answered the bell. Just when you were just about to get the 10 second count, Roger, they answered the bell. Now this drop is proud. It's feeling it. Zakai Ziegler swatted at the basketball. Rice still has it. Rice driving. Works it out to the right side. Rice. Got it to go. The dagger from Rice. Great Great shot. Tennessee quickly down the floor. Down three. A minute and a half to play. shooting two free throws, but back on the other end. Man, you talk about cold-blooded. Crowd is in full throat. I'm going to tell you to shush because I'm going to knock mine down. Now on Carlisle, sending Ziegler to the line. Balls down three. Now two. You got to think, Roger. Coach Barnes and Coach Woodson wouldn't have wanted it any other way. A tight matchup going down the stretch, anybody's game with a little over a minute left to play. We're only two minutes to go in the second half. Is it? Whoa! Wow. I don't know. Is this is the uh, second? I think I, ho I hope it's the second half. If not, but but who knows? Ah, close! Wow, man, we was close. Wow, no, man, man. Over three. What? Yeah. Wow, man, that was close. You want to get something up fairly quick, right? Because you can't afford to to let Indiana have that last possession, and, and, and you're going to have to file them either way. So you need something quick, go into the basket, or get a three to try to extend this game as far as you can. Charity exhibition matchup against Indiana last year. Tennessee won 89-88 over fourth-ranked Michigan State on the road. It helped propel the balls to an Elite Eight season and an SEC championship. And for Mike Woodson, he's learned a lot about his Hoosiers today. He's learned a lot about his Hoosiers today. And Indiana, I got news for you. You're going to fall in love with this basketball team because if they play with this toughness and tenacity, they're Both the Volunteers and the Hoosiers, both teams in the bonus. 
session here favors Tennessee as well as we get ready for these critical 39 seconds in Knoxville. Yeah, Tennessee, unfortunately, you know, you, you, you look at the time in which you have scored your last basket, so now you're over three minutes again. So you've got extended periods here in the second half where Tennessee has really stumbled to put the ball in the basket, and that's really hurt leading to Indiana on the other end, getting hotter and hotter and, and pulling away here towards the end. Ziegler, two for nine from the floor and three-point land. Marballo in his IU debut, six points, 11 rebounds. Tennessee basketball down by four, 39 seconds to play. Welcome to Indiana basketball. What a debut. Transfer from Washington State already with 18 points. He has not missed at the line. And that continues. He just stroked it with confidence, right? You know, some guys, you can tell when they step to the line, they haven't been there before. But this is a seasoned veteran who's been through the rigors. He's been through the wars. And this is not facing at all. Leaves that short. Millich hits the rebound. It is still a one-possession game. Now a second difference in between the game clock and the shot clock. Yeah, the longer you go, Tennessee, you're going to need to put up a, a three. Off the back iron, Rice the rebound for Indiana. Rice fouled with 10.4 seconds remaining. Yeah, here's the kind of sequence you don't need to shoot that three. That's a highly contested three-pointer there. Reverse the ball, try to get something else in rhythm. That's a tough, tough look. Tough stretch for Tennessee. O of its last four, one of its last 11, not hitting a field goal in the last three minutes, 40 seconds. And Rice trying to really end this game in the free throw line. One for two last trip. And misses the front end here. Young man really needs to settle down. Found that, find that rhythm that he shot the first one with just a moment ago. Where it was pure uh, net. Trying to make it a two possession game with 10 seconds to go. Rice got it. Timeout Indiana and Mike Woodson. Four-point Hoosier advantage. That's the big one. That's the 
free throw that you need to make it a two possession game. So with 10.4 seconds remaining, what does Tennessee do here? Yeah, you know, it's, there's still 10 mm. seconds left. In my opinion, if you can get something going to the basket, get a quick two, extend the game, you still have a, a lot of time left to be able to get that quick two, come down and foul again to extend the game. You don't have to have the three here on this possession as long as you get something going to the rim quickly. Just no way to simulate this kind of pressure in the preseason like what we've seen this afternoon. No, and we talked about that before, but both coaches, if they had their brothers, would like to see a game like this where it's high intensity, it comes down to mono and mono, I'm going to get mine versus you get yours. And, you know, the, the, the tougher team is going to walk out of here with a victory. Indiana's done a wonderful job of playing with their brand of basketball, that, that physicality from the Big Ten, imposing their will, and just knocking down crucial shots down after time. Yeah, they got hot from three-point land when they needed to. Didn't make a single three-pointer in the first half. They've hit four critical ones here in the second half. Yeah, you know, four critical ones after hitting none in the first half. Now, they're still shooting only four of 18, but conversely, Tennessee is only shooting seven of 31. You know, if, if you are Tennessee, that has to get better throughout the course of this year. I would not expect Chaz Lanier to shoot at a two out of 12 clip from the three-point line. I wouldn't expect for Chicago to be two out of seven for the duration of the season. So those numbers are going to go up. But odds are you're going to face someone like in Indiana, this physical brand of basketball, you know, in March. Will you be able to knock down those threes mm -hmm. when it matters? Score with 21 points for IU. Into Milicic. Stolen away by Malik Renew. The Hoosiers will win in Knoxville. And we and we lost. And our score is 62 to 66 by four. Wow. Both teams have a lot to look at on tape. And that's what you want, right? You want to just get something on tape. Not playing your own colored jersey in practice. So kudos to Indiana for coming in here in a tough environment on a Sunday afternoon and walking away from Rocky Top with a W. Mike Woodson's team picking up a win here in Knoxville thanks to a brilliant second half out scoring the balls by five. Charity exhibition benefiting the McClendon Foundation. We saw a thriller between the volunteers and the Indiana Hoosiers. For Steve Hamer and our entire crew, along with Sarah Detmuller, our reporter, I'm Roger Hoover saying thanks for watching from Knoxville. Well, that will do it from here from Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll see you all next time and have a great day, everybody. And uh, have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody, for watching. You know, Coach Brian.